All right, so we are here, episode three of Photo Redux, the series where I take photos from yesteryear that I processed and shared and probably wouldn't have done that today. And I re-edit them using fresh eyes, new software, new tools, new mindset. So again, this is one of the biggest surprises for me, this series. People seem to really be enjoying it and it really amps me up to get more of these out. So every week I'm gonna get one of these out here for you. And for today's episode, I wanna do something a little bit differently. So usually I start out and I talk about the photo, uh, where it was taken and kind of the thoughts behind it. Uh, and then I turn to the computer to edit it. Now I'm gonna do that still, but I want to show you a little bit of a kind of over the shoulder preview of how I work with my photos. So the other day I tweeted out uh, a photo of two pieces of hardware that I use pretty much for every single photo edit that I make. And they're right here. Uh, the first one is the Wacom Intuos Pro tablet. Uh, I use, I've used that tablet, I don't know how many years now, I think since 2004, since the Intuos 3. And I've just gotten used to using a pen uh, to make my selections, my adjustment brush selections and strokes. And it just makes things a lot more precise than using my entire wrist and hand with a trackpad or a mouse. And it's one of those things that once you get one, uh, you know, you want to put the mouse away for a week or two and just try using your pen. And I promise you, you won't go back. The other piece of gear that I introduced rather recently within the past year is by Palette, and it's called Palette Gear. And it's these little knobs and sliders and buttons that can be customized to an application. So much like the Wacom, uh, where I can customize the pen and the touch gestures for each application, I can do that with the Palette Gear. So uh, I'm gonna show you how I use both of those to edit my photos, just so you can see, this is what I do when I edit my photos. Now. This photo for episode three was taken in Port Townsend, Washington. And I believe it was 2011. This was back when I was using the Canon system. So I believe it might've been an EOS 5D Mark II or Mark III. I, I don't know, I'll, we'll look at the EXIF information. And it was a 24 to 105 lens. I really like this photo actually, unlike the previous two photos where when I look at them, I freak out. Uh, this one I like, but the processing, I wouldn't have applied the same kind of processing uh, today as I did back then. And so what I wanna do is approach it differently. There are a few characteristics about what I did there that I like, and we'll check it out. But for the most part, it's gonna be a different photo. And so you'll see in a second what I mean. So let's turn to the computer here and uh, get processing. And remember, I'm gonna be splicing in uh, over the shoulder footage of me using these two devices along with uh, the actual screencast. So if you have any questions, by all means, let me know. And it's a good reminder, actually, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up. Please subscribe if you love what you're seeing and anything you wanna know, check out in the description below. All right, time to edit. All right, so here, this is the photo I'm talking about. Uh, I took it at this pier in Port Townsend, Washington. And you can see it was taken with the Canon EOS 5D Mark II and the 24 to 70 millimeter f 2.8L. And it was taken back at 2011. Now, uh, as far as the XF information goes with the shutter speed and exposure, this was closed down all the way to f 22 at 157 seconds. So quite a bit of time. And you can see uh, why the water is really, uh, I like the way it's glassed out and the clouds are moving pretty fast that day. So got some motion there. Now, composition-wise, I, I think it's great. Uh, I stand by the composition. Where I differ is uh, in terms of the processing, where it's this kind of really this contrasty black and white. And I think in one way it kind of works, and maybe it worked uh, for me back in 2011, but for today, I would want this to be some sort of a color uh, reproduction. So this is the original photo straight out of camera, no edits whatsoever. Uh, and you can see just before, you know, what we started with and kind of, or what we ended up with. And so, uh, like I said, I kind of want to go uh, into a different place uh, with the Lightroom here. Now, before we begin, what I want to show you is my workspace. This is how I edit my photos when I'm at my computer at home. Uh, and so four devices pretty much at any given time. On the top layer, we've got the Wacom Intuos Pro. This is the current gen large. Um, I travel with medium. Uh, if I, you know, I know I'll get questions 
uh, people asking whether, uh, you know, what I prefer, medium or large. If you had to choose, I would say go with medium. Uh, I got the large because I, I do like having a larger canvas to work with, but the medium is about the size of a 15 inch laptop and it packs really well. Next to it is Palette Gear, and I'm gonna show you uh, how I have it configured before we start editing. You'll notice that there are these kind of color codes that you can configure around each of these little modules. So, uh, and that actually has a rhyme and reason. And on the, this shelf here, my little keyboard uh, trackpad shelf, I've got my Apple Magic keyboard and trackpad, and that's just kind of like, you know, for uh, any sort of system stuff I do, I do that here. So, got my trusty Pro Pen 2, and uh, this is kind of how I work. Uh, although I'm usually a little bit closer to the computer, I'm a little bit further back just to have make room for the microphone. So before we begin, I want to show you the customization. So uh, this is, uh, you know, I think people, one of the things people get uh, overwhelmed with is, uh, you know, feeling like they have to, or intimidated, is feeling like they have to, you know, get these precise configurations going. And really, you know, just use these products, you know, make them work for you. And what I mean by that is, look at my Wacom configuration. I'm primarily in Lightroom, uh, so I'm showing you my Lightroom configuration here. And it's very simple. Uh, I basically configure it to use the way I want. So under functions and touch ring, I have a specific set for Lightroom Classic CC. And basically the two things I always use this touch ring for um, is to control the brush size and the brush feather. So you can see those configurations right here, brush size, brush feather. And in fact, the other twos I have, I have skip. And then in the pro pen, I have a Lightroom configuration and the two buttons that I've got here that you can configure these two buttons right here. Uh, this one is option, which is my favorite modifier uh, because Lightroom can do so much when you use the option key. And then the, the top one is to undo, just in case, you know, I do, a, I make a stroke or something and I wanna quickly undo it, I can do that. And that's really all that I do with Lightroom. Um, I don't really use the um, express keys that much. Uh, sometimes I do, and in those cases I'll configure them, but for the most part, I'm telling you, it's, the biggest thing for me with uh, the tablet is the pen interface and that touch ring. I do love that touch ring. And then, the palette app. So I have two profiles for palette. One is Lightroom develop, one is Lightroom finishing. I do also have one for Final Cut, but since I'm not, this is not a Final Cut video, I'm not showing it to you, I don't wanna confuse you. So for develop, you can see here, as I watch, if I remove this bottom row, it gets automatically removed from the configuration on the screen, which is really awesome. Put it back and then, there you go. So I, know which tools in Lightroom I use the most. And they are primarily in the uh, the basic panel and then also split toning. So for develop, I have color coded here. This entire kind of column right here, this is, you can see if you look on the screen, uh, there's basic exposure, there's contrast, highlights and shadows, clarity and vibrance. So I can control without looking at the sliders. I know from top to bottom, I after using this for a while, I know that these are the functions. I just kind of know them. Then I've got my under redo over here. Uh, and then these four dials are for split toning. And so these are the highlights. So this is the hue and the saturation or the color and the strength for the highlights, color strength for shadows. And then this is just the before after toggle so that if I want to see the before and after, I just tap that button. This button here switches to the next profile, which is the finishing. So another thing, just like the with the Wacom tablet, you don't have to use everything you have. Like I don't even have these activated in this profile. These top three buttons are the same, you know, switch profile, undo, redo. But then the bottom, post crop, vignette, amount, midpoint, feather, the three sliders I use the most. Sharpening, amount, and masking, the two sliders that I use the most. And then dehaze, sometimes if I use it, and then the before after toggle. And I just color code this. So like I know just kind of switching between them, we know what I need to do. So it's really not that big of a deal. So the moral of the story before we start editing is don't overthink it. If you have, if you've invested in these devices, don't overthink it. Not everything has to be dialed in specifically. Just get it to a place where if you can get comfortable with 15 or 20% of the functionality, you'll get comfortable with moving up to 30, 40, and eventually 100. All right, now let's get back here. So here's the photo. Um, and what I want to do is let's just start to develop. And first thing I'll do is get a white balance. So I'm gonna 
take my white balance dropper and I'm gonna click right here in the sky. You can see how it got rid of that, that color cast from the neutral density filter. Uh, so that's good there. Next thing we'll do, let's scroll down before we start doing cleanup. Let's go down to uh, apply a profile correction. So it automatically detected that that's the lens. Um, and now we will go ahead and do some cleanup. So spot healing tool and visualize dust spots. So yeah, uh, I'm just gonna do a quick fast forward while I clean all this up. Um, but what I wanna show you is in Lightroom, as I tap the middle button, you see how it's only going through the two functions that I have set, brush size and brush feather. So I can increase my brush size as I slide along the touch ring and I can also adjust the feather. Now, here's something I never really talked about in terms of dust spot cleanup. Normally you want the brush to be just a little bit larger than the spot you're cleaning. And that way it'll make the selection a little bit more seamless. It'll blend in better. Uh, you don't want the, to match the size of the spot to the brush. You want the brush to be a little bit larger. So I'm gonna go ahead here and zoom through this. All right, that was fun, right? But the good news is that turn off here. Now we are kind of done with dust spots. All right, so now we're good here. Uh, the other thing, actually, let me get rid of that little bird poop. And we are good. All right, so now I'm happy with this photo. Uh, everything is looking good. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is just go to the crop here. And I'm going to level it just a little bit because the horizon was slightly off kilter and now we are straight now uh now it's time to do some of the basic corrections so you can see that if you look at the histogram i have a ton of space here that i'm not using so what i'm going to do is with the slider so watch as i move the slider see how it is adjusting which is really awesome so i'm going to open up the exposure a little bit then i'm going to move down and add some contrast and i'm going to go to the highlights, bring that out a little bit, drop the shadows, add some clarity, and a little bit of vibrance. Now I still have some room left, so I'm gonna take the white slider, bring that whites over just a little bit, and let's kinda just bring down the exposure. So yeah, I really like being able to dial in each individual setting using a tactile uh, switch or slider. Uh, to me, that that's just something really cool. And then you can see if we toggle the before and the after, this is so far what we've done. Uh, and it's just really nice uh, in terms of, you know, just co correcting for tone and color. It's really cool. So uh, open up the shadows a little bit more. And now the, in terms of histogram, we're looking good. Colors are nice. Uh, let's go to the tone curve here add a little bit of an S curve, drop down shadow. So basically again, the, what the S curve is doing is it's uh, adding a little bit more punch to the shadows, opening up the highlights and you can see the way it looks like a little bit of an S. Let's bring up the, add some grays to the shadows, give it a vintagey look. Then I'm gonna go to the blue channel and I'm gonna add a little bit of warmth to the highlights and a little bit of blue to the shadows. So you could see that split tone now that we're going for. Now, uh, over here, this is getting, we're starting to crush those shadows. So I'm gonna take the adjustment brush here. I'm gonna select shadows, open that up, and I'm gonna open the exposure just a little bit. And then let's just kinda, I also wanna make sure that auto mask is turned on because I wanted to sample the colors. I don't want to uh, open up shadows in the water over here. So let's just kinda, brush through here and let's continue refining that so you can see how those shadows are starting to open up a little bit bring some of that detail back and then same thing over here just a little bit Let's open up that boardwalk just a little bit. All right, cool. Actually, now that I think of it, I'm just gonna open up the whole boardwalk. 
And that way, what that'll do is that'll serve as kind of a leading line for the viewer, kind of the brightest part over here. Uh, so looking good here, let's close the adjustment brush. Now, in terms of, I don't particularly care for the color that I introduced into the highlights. So I'm gonna go to under HSL, which is hue, saturation, and luminance. I'm gonna take the target adjustment tool here, and I'm gonna hover over this area right here, this kind of yellow area, and I'm gonna drag up and down. And so I kind of like it right around there. That's looking a little bit better and watch if we toggle the before and after of that. Just kind of changes it. It dulls it off a little bit, which I like. So, so far we're looking good. I'm liking this. I'm going to further refine the split tone that I applied. And so with the split toning, what I want to do is I have these four sliders right here that I'm going to use to control. And this is how I use it. Starting with the highlights, I take the saturation and I bring that all the way out. And you can see that it has the hue value at 100%. So what I'm gonna to start to do is drag over the hue and find a place, I'm gonna go more towards the greens because it kinda of has that you know seaside feel. So I'm gonna right around there and then I'm going to bring that saturation down until I find a place that you know I really like. So somewhere right around there. Same thing with the shadows. Let's bring the shadow saturation slider out. I'm gonna bring that over to blue, almost like a teal. Bring that back down. Somewhere right around there. So see that, to me, just using these dials, uh, gives me a really nice precise control uh, and I can use it with my pen for sure but with my pen part of me is also looking at the slider like my eyes are on the sliders here this way by using the dials I don't have to look at the sliders at all I'm just kind of like dialing and looking at the image which to me is really important all right so now we're at the point where we're close to finishing off the image this is where I switch the profile on my palette from develop over to uh, finishing and you can see the mode changes so slide the tools down and what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna start by using uh, my sharpening. So with sharpening, kind of go here. I usually start at zero and I put my cursor over a sharp area somewhere right there. Let's bring that out until I start to see it pop. So right around there. And then I also want to mask out. So start at zero and until it starts removing the sharpening from the smooth area. So that's looking good there. Next, let's add a little bit of a post crop vignette. So start by drawing them out. You could see, I'm literally dialing in that vignette. Let's bring it more towards the center. And then let's add a nice feather. And I'm actually gonna open that up just a little bit. And so if I toggle the before and after, see what I mean, it's pretty traumatic of a difference here, just, what split toning can do. And again, you know, just going back from this one, which is very cool in terms of it just, you know, it's very stark, cooler temperature, black and white, uh, very sullen. This one to me, I don't know, there's something uh, that, that speaks more to who I am today as a photographer that I really like. And so, uh, you know, again, I hope you enjoy this. Uh, I hope you got something out of seeing uh, how I edit my photos uh, using my Wacom Intuos Pro tablet and my palette gear kit. I'll have both of these linked in the description below. And again, if you like this video, please hit that thumbs up and I'd love it if you subscribe to the channel. I'll be putting out new videos every week, new photo redux every week. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions uh, or comments and I will see you on the next one. Thanks a lot, everyone.